Ladies and gentlemen, here's your EIDL grant update for September 4th, 2020. In this video, I'm going to show you how the Trump administration, together with the U.S. Senate, collaborated in capping the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant at $1,000 per employee. And watch this video to the end because I'm going to tell you that together with my man 10 grand speak and see, we're going to let the White House know and demand that the president forces the Small Business Administration to disperse the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance and grant to all legitimate small business applicants, ladies and gentlemen. So I know that after yesterday's video, you're probably holding up a pitchfork in front of the SBA building right now demanding that the administration disperses the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance and that you will not pay back the grant that the SBA already dispersed to you because it is indeed a grant pursuant to the CARES Act that whether the Small Business Administration approved or denied your application for the EIDL, you do not have to pay it back. So I obtained the court briefing with the where the Small Business Administration legal team actually suggested that the advance was just an advance and not a grant and that the advance came together with the economic injury disaster loan if the Small Business Administration approved you for the loan and therefore you had to pay the grant and the loan back. And if you were declined, then it would just be a grant and you don't have to pay it back. Again, you know how the respondents to the response, they stated that it is not just a grant, excuse me, not just an advance. The EIDL advance is also a grant pursuant to the CARES Act. And even if, according to the CARES Act, even if, the Small Business Administration declines an application for the EIDL. The applicant, the small business owner, does not have to pay the grant back. So I scrolled through the court brief and I discovered something that I did not notice before. During her sworn testimony, Administra Administrator Javita Carranza actually stated that she consulted with the U.S. Senate the U.S. Senate Small Business Committee, the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business Entrepreneurship before deciding on capping the EIDL grant at $1,000 per employee. Here is exactly what it reads, ladies and gentlemen. This is Small Business Administrator Javita Carranza's congressional sworn testimony before the House Committee on Small Business on July 17th, 2020. And I quote, the EIDL advance administration was based on on the number of applications that were again in the queue applying for the advance and we based it on $1,000 per employed. It wasn't just an arbitrary number. It was a well-assessed and analyzed strategy. It was discussed with members of the Senate Small Business Committee. Let me just repeat that. It was discussed with members of the Senate Small Business Committee. And then she goes on to state how they had to do it, that they argued before the Senate Small Business Committee that they had to do it in that way to have enough money to be able to pay as many small business owners as possible the economic injury disaster loan advance, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in the U.S. Senate Small Business Committee, as I have said on previous videos, who structured and engineered the economic injury disaster loan advance program? The two top dogs at the committee, ranking member, Democrat U.S. Senator Benjamin Cardin and Chairman of the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Senator Marco Rubio, Republican Senator Marco Rubio. It was a bipartisan effort, ladies and gentlemen. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance was a bipartisan effort. That said, let's go ahead and go to the congressional record so you can read exactly what ranking member Senator Ben Cardin from Maryland actually said in regards to it. First, he started thanking Senator Rubio, of course. I already mentioned Senator Rubio. I thank him for his leadership. The two of us were working together well before this week, and that is why we were probably further along in helping small businesses than the other parts of this package dealing with the various economic areas. Senator Shaheen was a valuable member of our team. I have worked with Senator Shaheen on small businesses issues for a long time. She was a key player in putting together the package that we have to present to our colleagues here in the Senate. I also want to acknowledge Senator Collins. It was the four of us who were meeting regularly and communicating regularly and who recommended this package that we will shortly be voting on as it relates to small business. Now, this is in the this is where Senator Ben Cardin actually directly refers to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program. 
We have other programs available. We have a new program, which is labeled as a grant, a $10 billion grant program for emergency cash availability for small businesses. And then it goes on to read how some businesses don't have access to financing, the smallest of the small businesses. We have included that in the first supplemental. That's the economic injury disaster loan to which he's referring in the previous paragraph. We now allow you to make that application. And with that application, if you need to get cash immediately, the SBA can write you a check for up to $10,000. And we want that done within three days. We want that money out in days, not weeks. We hear that all the time from small businesses. We need help now. Now, that's what he said in the congressional record. That's what he said on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Unfortunately, the petitioners seeking to have the U.S. District Court of the Middle District of Florida Orlando Division to force the Small Business Administration to disperse the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance lost this case, ladies and gentlemen. The court, in its decision, wrote the following. Petitioners argue the rule is arbitrary and capricious because Congress intended the SBA award EIDL grants based on the amount requested by the applicants, not the applicants' number of employees. This fails for two reasons at this preliminary stage. For starters, the court already rejected petitioners' contention that respondent must provide EIDL grants in the amount requested by applicants up to $10,000. Section 1110E of the CARES Act says only that applicants may request the SBA to provide up to $10,000. It doesn't require the SBA to provide $10,000 or any amount requested. So the SBA enjoys discretion determining EIDL grant amounts up to $10,000. Ultimately, the court decides that ordered and adjudged that petitioner's motion for preliminary injunction, Doc 26, is denied. Done and ordered in chambers in Orlando, Florida on August 19th, 2020. The Nevada District Court judge in denying the motion wrote the following. Rather, I find that the plain language of the CARES Act and the statutes that empower the SBA and its administrator afford the SBA some discretion when making emergency grants. I'm not persuaded that the SBA's duty to fund those grants in the amount requested up to $10,000 and within three days is so plainly prescribed by the CARES Act as to be free from doubt. That's what the CARES Act reads. So regardless of congressional intention, regardless of all these lawmakers making a big fuss and sending letters out to the Small Business Administration, the law is the law, ladies and gentlemen. These courts look directly to the law, the language in the law, before taking any evidence that lawmakers are claiming that it was congressional intent that small business admin, that the Small Business Administration dispersed the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance, ladies and gentlemen. And if you read the language in the CARES Act, in general, during the covered period, an entity included for eligibility in subsection B, in other words, a small business, including small business concerns, private nonprofit organizations, and small agricultural cooperatives, that applies for a loan under section of the Small Business Act. In other words, any small business that applies for the economic injury disaster loan in response to the virus may request that the administrator provide an advance that is subject to paragraph three. Let me just repeat that. In response to the virus, if a small business applies for the economic injury disaster loan in response to the virus, may request that the administrator provide an advance that is subject to paragraph three in the amount requested by such applicant to such applicant within three days after the administrator receives an application from such applicant. In other words, as applicants of the economic injury disaster loan, we have the ability, we may, we have the privilege of requesting an economic injury disaster loan grant. Ladies and gentlemen, nowhere in the law does it read that the administrator has to disperse that grant within three days time. Just compare it to, let's say, in response to the virus, may request that the administrator provide an ice cream topped plate of bread pudding. Doesn't force the Small Business Administration to serve that ice cream topped bread pudding with caramel syrup drizzled on top. No, it does not do that. Basically, we have the right to request that. And we, we, we probably have the right to request that at any point in time. So 
There's no law forcing the Small Business Administration to disperse the $10,000 economic injury disaster. That's why we're running into all these issues. That's why they're not paying it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it's very popular right now to shift all the blame to the Small Business Administration. They're the evil empire. They're the ones that are stopping you from getting your $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance. Just keep this in mind that the administrator of the Small Business Administration, Ms. Javita Carranza, before sworn testimony, she stated that she presented her argument to ensure that she only dispersed the $1,000 per employee economic injury disaster loan advance. And the administrator of the Small Business Administration is a cabinet level position. What does that mean? That means she's basically President Donald Trump's hype person, ladies and gentlemen. A number of people say, oh, she's a rogue employee. She's doing what she's not supposed to do. She's breaking the law. There is no way this lady's breaking the law, ladies and gentlemen, because she would not have capped that EIDL advance if President Donald Trump would have told her, don't cap it at $1,000. Give the small business owners of this country $10,000, ladies and gentlemen. If he would have said that, she would have done it. And she's not stupid enough to break the law. She's probably the toughest person in that cabinet, ladies and gentlemen. This lady started her career by packing boxes on a UPS loading dock and crawled her way up the corporate ladder to become VP of operations for the Caribbean and Latin America and all this crazy stuff to get to the point where she became uh, working with the treasury and now she's the administrator of the small business administration. That's not in her defense because she probably didn't fight for it enough, but she's not going to be that stupid to perjure herself before Congress or do something that's going to anger the president because he can let her go at any time he wants. And just to ensure that you understand that she is a cabinet level position, just go ahead and look. Let's take a look at her profile on the Small Business Administration website. Javita Carranza serves as the 26th administrator of the U.S. Small Business Administration. As a member of President Trump's cabinet, she advocates on behalf of the 30 million small businesses in America. Now let's look at whitehouse.gov. The cabinet established in Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution. The cabinet's role is to advise the president on any subject he may require relating to the duties of each member's respective office. Among those right here, small, the Small Business Administration, President Trump's cabinet. And look who we find when we scroll down. Administrator of the Small Business Administrator, Javita Carranza. Together with Secretary Treasury Steve Mnuchin. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, Vice President Michael Pence, ladies and gentlemen. So that is where the buck stops. That what you have to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, because if President Donald Trump would have told this lady, listen, do not cap those economic injury disaster loan advances at $1,000 because I'm going to get such a huge media backlash and you could jeopardize my reelection chances and your spot as the administrator of the Small Business Administration, there's no way on this planet, on the greatest experiment, the greatest democratic experiment on the face of this earth ever known to man, that this lady would have capped the economic injury disaster loan advance at $1,000, ladies and gentlemen. She would have never done it. He doesn't care about it, kid. He doesn't care about it. He doesn't care about the economic injury disaster loan advance. Look up his Twitter, fe Twitter feed. He has not mentioned the economic injury disaster loan advance once. He didn't mention it once. Paycheck protection program loan, dozens of times. We've dispersed millions of loans worth billions of dollars, help save countless amount of jobs. EIDL, zero. Ladies and gentlemen, he has never said anything about it, as far as I know. And I stay on top of this. You can see that I geek out on this pretty intensely, ladies and gentlemen. He's never mentioned it. So it is his fault. He's the one that's stopping you from getting your $1,000 economic injury disaster loan advance. Together with bipartisan support from the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. I'll go ahead and show you more information that shows that the House of Representatives have also been on it. So he's the one that's stopping you together with Democrat Senator Benjamin Cardin, together with Republican Senator Marco Rubio. They've ignored it. They've ignored S.4227, which corrects, which correctly structures the language in a way that ensures that the Small Business Administration has to disperse the full 
$10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance to all legitimate small business applicants. You can go ahead and let's take a look at the text while we're at it. The administrator shall provide to an applicant. Again, see, now in this bill, the co-sponsors have actually indicated that the administration shall provide to an applicant an advance under this subsection, not later than three days. Now, under this bill, if it were to become law, then the law would mandate that the SBA has to provide that advance within three days time, regardless of whether the application of the applicant for a loan under section 7B2, that's the EIDL of the Small Business Act has been approved. So whether the Small Business Administration approves or declines your application, the administrator has to disperse the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance. Additional amount with respect to any recipient of an advance under this subsection before the date of enactment of the Insured Increased Disaster Loans for Small Businesses Act of less than $10,000, the administrator shall not later than 15 days after the date of enactment of the act provide to the recipient an additional advance such that the total amount received by the recipient is $10,000. In other words, if you received an EIDL advance of $1,000 because you are a sole proprietor, then the Small Business Administration has to pay you the difference to make up for the $10,000 that it has to pay. So in other words, it has to pay you $9,000. If it paid you $2,000, the Small Business Administration would have to pay you $8,000. So you will be a recipient of the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance as per congressional intent. But intent, as you can see, does not fly in the courts, ladies and gentlemen. They take a look at the language, the statutory language in the bill when determining what decision they will make in regards to any lawsuit against the Small Business Administration or entity whatsoever, ladies and gentlemen. That said, I want to go ahead and work together with my man, 10 grand. I'd say 100 grand, but it's 10 grand at this particular point in time. We'll make it 100 grand once we seek for forgiveness for the economic injury disaster loan. Speak and see. He went ahead and put together a petition to the White House to demand that the Small Business Administration disperses the full $10,000 economic injury disaster loan advance to all legitimate small business applicants. The man is in front of Marco Rubio's office today in tampa today holding up a picket sign my dog that's what i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen if i was in florida i'd be right there right next to him ladies and gentlemen that's it so you can sign these petitions has two petitions up one on change.org and one on the whitehouse.gov so on those petitions on change.org you can actually sign the petition and then you can pitch in to ensure that change.org distributes the petition as broadly as possible among its network so it gets around to as many small business owners and gets as many petitions as possible so the petition can get attention and increase the chances that S.4227 or the full disbursement of the $10,000 economic injury disaster loan gets put into law and the Small Business Administration disperses it to all small business owners. So I went ahead and created two short links for the petitions. The first one, the White House petition is bit.ly slash WH10KPET, which stands for White House 10K Petition. Bit.ly slash WH10KPET and the change.org petition can be found at bit.ly slash C10KPET. So just an abbreviation for change.org 10K petition. Again, bit.ly slash C 10K pet. I have the addresses up on the screen. Go ahead and load them up. Write them up and let the White House know that in order for them to secure your unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness as per the Declaration of Independence, they have to ensure that they mandate, that they force the Small Business Administration, because as I just told you, that the administrator, the Small Business Administration, and everybody who works under her, that's just their yes people, ladies and gentlemen. She's the president's yes lady, ladies and gentlemen. So if he says it, if the president mandates the Small Business Administration disperses the full $10,000 full $10, EIDL grant to all legitimate small business applicants, it's done, ladies and gentlemen. It is done. Let me know what you think. 
Drop your comments in the comment section below. Watch this video right here. For more EIDL and stimulus coverage, click the like button if you like the video. Click the subscribe button to stay on top of my findings. We mobilize like no one else will and stop at nothing until each and every one of you is funded with the monetary ammunition you need to save and feed your families, save your businesses, keep your employees on payroll, and ultimately save this country. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America and everybody else on this planet. Talk soon.